Welcome to Dory Cody on Shamanism, a weekly podcast that explores one theme in shamanism throughout each month. Get comfortable, have a seat, and let's get started. Welcome to this podcast number 86. We're going to speak today about the concept of ancestors from a shamanic perspective. I welcome you to sit back, relax, and listen to questions and my answers. So, Dory, what is the difference between ancestors and an ancestral helping spirit from a shamanic perspective? Yes, well, I'm delighted with that question. Ancestors from a shamanic perspective are people, humans, who have walked the earth at some point in the history of this planet, who are in some way connected with a particular human alive today. So for instance, when I speak of my ancestors from a shamanic perspective, I am not speaking merely of my blood relatives going back for many, many generations. I am speaking about the body of humans who have walked the earth at any time in history. For instance, an ancestor could be Galileo. An ancestor could be some other well-known leader in the history of the world. Could be Adolf Hitler, although we certainly would not choose to have him as an ancestral helping spirit. The difference between an ancestor, when we speak of ancestors in a very generic kind of way, and an ancestral helping spirit, is that an ancestral helping spirit is the spirit of a very defined ancestor who again does not need to be a blood ancestor, who we develop a dear and close partnership with in shamanic reality. So for instance, I might have an ancestor who lived hundreds and hundreds of years ago who was a shaman at some point in his life as I do, I actually have such an ancestral helping spirit. And I don't know whether there's a blood connection between he and I, but based on information I've received through journeys, I don't believe we have ever had a blood connection. However, he's an ancestor who I call on because he has wisdom from his time on earth that he um, held as a shaman from hundreds of years ago from a different continent than the one that I live on that is extremely helpful to me when I want to mine information or wisdom or guidance for myself or for a client. I have another ancestral spirit who is clearly a blood relative of mine and I have a different kind of relationship with him. Then I have a third ancestral spirit who is, who is somebody who I knew when she was alive on this earth. And she's a helping spirit who guides me around issues related to weather shamanism and my understanding of the workings of weather. So you see, there are very, very different kinds of ancestral spirits there, some of whom I know I have a direct blood lineage with and others that I am either unsure of or know pretty surely I do not have a bloodline relationship with. And so what's important is that when people who are pursuing a shamanic path begin to do work to honor their ancestors, they might be doing two very different kinds of things. For instance, there are ceremonies that I've participated in and also led where we honor the ancestors from our bloodline. We create an altar, we uh, speak of them, we give them food offerings, we um, give them uh, a lot of honoring and power and invite them into our lives to guide us 
often these kinds of ceremonies are done around a specific event. For instance, um, in the Mexican and South American tradition, there is uh, a ceremony done at the time of Halloween that is called uh, Dia del Muerto. And it is basically a ceremony to honor uh, the day of the dead, the people who have walked before us, who are our blood relatives. And then there are lots of other ceremonies that we might do that are geared specifically to celebrating all of life, all the humans who have level, ever lived on planet Earth, who are our human ancestors, regardless of blood lineage. So I, I hope that helps to clarify what we're talking about when we speak of ancestors from a shamanic perspective. So when you call upon these ancestors that you've just described, is it similar to calling a friend to help you with a problem? Or do you call them to visit? Do you choose them because of their skills? Yes, that's, uh, well, there are actually many different ways that a shamanic practitioner might approach this. For instance, I have a very particular relationship with two of my ancestral spirits. As I said, one of them is somebody who um, I knew when she was alive here on Earth, who is a, an ancestral helping spirit who guides me with information, wisdom, and um, prayerful help around uh, the spirits of weather and what is happening with weather. And so if I have a question or an issue or a problem that has something to do with weather and it relates to either me or a client, I may go to her to access that wisdom. Additionally, it is possible that I would do a journey where I was just inviting all of my ancestors to come forth to provide me with power, healing, or wisdom that would be helpful to either me or to a client on whose behalf I'm working. And so there are, there are really no rules, so to speak, about how one approaches these ancestors. The most important thing is to always remember that you approach your ancestors with great respect and honor, the way our indigenous peoples from time back thousands and thousands of years ago always did. The ancestors are to be revered and honored and respected. And if you approach them with that in your heart, then they are responsive. If you approach them with bad intentions or intentions that are not in harmony with love and compassion and respect and honor, then you're not likely going to have a strong connection with any particular ancestor or a group of ancestors because they respond to respect and honor. Are they similar to power animals as in one journeys to find an ancestral helping spirit? Yes, absolutely. When I teach my advanced programs, uh, beginning with the apprenticeship program, we actually devote an entire weekend to um, identifying who are our ancestral spirits. How do we want to work with them? What is it they would like to develop in terms of a relationship with me as an individual? And how are they asking me to honor them? Is there some uh, ritual or ceremony that I am meant to do before I even approach them? What kinds of issues, questions, or problems, or you know, wisdom am I likely to garner from this particular ancestral spirit? And so it is very similar to connecting with a power animal in that it's done in the context of a journey. And the intention, as I've said in prior podcasts, is always the most important thing to begin with in a journey. You set your intention. Please take me to find, you know, you go to the upper world or the lower world because these spirits can be found in either of those places. Please take me to find an ancestor who would like to work with me 
around issues related to my current family connections, for instance. There's a clear intention. And that will drive the journey to take you to find or connect with this ancestral helping spirit who will particularly help you to work with this issue. Or you can, in a more generic kind of way, say, please take me to find an ancestral spirit who would like to work with me at this time in my evolution here on Earth. And that will take you to a different ancestor, perhaps. So there is no limit to how many ancestral spirits a a shamanic practitioner might have. But again, I always like to focus on remembering that the practice of shamanism is not about um, stacking up an endless number of helping spirits. It's about developing deep partnerships, working relationships with a few known helping spirits. So I don't encourage people to say, oh, I've got an ancestral spirit for this, that, and the other thing. And then they have 25 ancestral spirits and they can't develop a depth relationship with them. So again, you know, there's potentially thousands of ancestors who you could connect with, but go back to that place of remembering and knowing that the depth of the work comes from the depth of the relationship, the partnership that you develop with any given spirit helper, including ancestors. So a piece of what you're talking about is what's in it for them. Um, Clearly they can help us. And if we give them deep respect, uh, and you know, a teacher loves nothing better than a good student. Mm-hmm. So, so the respect and learning from them ha- can help them, yes? Absolutely. Ancestors love to come and be helpful, to um, download, so to speak, their wisdom, their knowledge, their experience. and um, And in addition to that, they... As a, as, a, as a way of um, us showing them respect and honor, they get fed because they desire, if they're working with us, it's because they desire to have this connection. It's an equal, it's a, it's a relationship of reciprocity. And so without that reciprocity, then any potential relationship with an ancestor is not going to... Um, take hold you know you might have a connection with an ancestor once and then you go back to them and it's like no that relationship is not meant to develop into anything deeper but when you when you have connected with an ancestor spirit who desires this relationship as much as you do then there is the reciprocity that ancestor will be fed as much as you will by virtue of the relationship Mm. Dory, you've done a lot of work with children. Yes. Often when I see children in my family, I think of my mother and wish she were here to see them because she's not alive anymore. Do you see a lot of children who have bloodline ancestral spirits around them? Yes. It is not unusual for me to work with a child. And while I am you know, preparing to go into the journey while I'm rattling and drumming and celebrating with this child, there are times when I clearly see um, a deceased grandmother or great-grandmother or great-grandfather or someone of that ilk who is energetically around the child. And that happens most definitely more in situations where the child has known this ancestor while they were alive. And that ancestor is still, you know, hanging around pretty closely as a, uh, as an angel of sorts, watching over their grandchild or great grandchild. Everybody has ancestral spirits. There's no, there's no um, differentiation between uh, somebody who is a uh, six month old and somebody who is a uh, 60 year old. 
And so do, do nations have ancestral spirits? We have a lot of talk right now about our founding fathers and mothers in this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. Do, do groups have ancestral spirits that work and guide with them as well? Without a doubt, there are um, ancestral groups who work with the peoples of their own land, their own culture. I'll give you an example. Um, many, many years ago when I was a student with Sandra Ingerman and we were doing a um, ceremony to connect with uh, spirits of some men who had died in the Vietnam War. We were going to a very specific place to connect with a particular group of men who had died during a very particular battle. And uh, in that um, piece of work, I and a couple of other people in the circle quite unexpectedly connected with some Vietnamese soldiers who had also been killed in that battle. And um, not knowing how to help them to move into spirit reality because I was not aware of their culture. I didn't have enough cultural information about what their own beliefs were. What I did was I called on their ancestors to come down and help these spirits who were stuck here in the middle world to move on. And I was astonished at the number of ancestors who just came down and did whatever it was they were doing to help the spirits of these men who had died in that particular battle to move on into spirit reality. So that was a real teaching for me of, oh, there are culturally related ancestors who are not necessarily from a bloodline, but who are particularly connected to that culture or that region or the land of that area. Mm. Mm, that's beautiful. Yes. It was a powerful, it was a very powerful teaching for me. Mm, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to share about ancestral helping spirits? I would like to say that anybody who's out there who's a shamanic practitioner who hasn't already done so, I encourage you to do a journey with the intention of asking to be taken to an ancestral spirit who would like to partner with you at this point in your spiritual evolution to help you with developing your own spiritual gifts. and. If you are not clear about how to do that journey, I encourage you to um, either uh, write a comment on, you know, on this podcast on SoundCloud or write me an email at dory at dorycody.com and ask for further guidance. I'm happy to help. This is a very important part of shamanic practice and one that is not commonly caught, taught in, you know, early or beginner introductory kind of work, but is, is helpful to anybody who has a shamanic practice. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for listening to Dory Cody on shamanism. We'd love to hear your thoughts, stories, reactions, and questions. Come on over to DoryCody.com and join the conversation. And tune in next week for more on this subject or next month for a new subject. You can subscribe to this podcast in iTunes or sign up on DoryCody.com to receive notices when the podcasts are posted. That's Dory, D-O-R-Y, and Cody, C-O-T-E, dot com. Drumming and Rattling by Dory Cody and Terry Morgan. Technical assistance and audio production by jillhackett.com. And this is Susan Savell, wishing you many blessings in your life. We hope to have you join us next time.